Mysterious, misunderstood, and at the forefront of military history, Northrop's YF-23 Black Widow lost the Advanced Tactical Fighter ATF, competition to Lockheed's YF-22 Lightning, we turned our gaze to its unique weapons bay configuration. Like many things on the YF-23, this feature has great potential benefit, but also represents a higher development risk for the USAF. Ultimately, this may very well damage Northrop's prospects for supplying American air superiority fighters in the 21st century. And perhaps for good reason at the time, but today, the 23's unique weapons bay configuration would almost certainly be highly appreciated. Northrop slash MC Donald Douglas built two YF-23 prototypes. Each is named Black Widow 2 and Grey Ghost. In the 1980s, the USAF, irritated by the appearance of the Su-27 and MiG-29 from the Soviet Union, held a competition to obtain more sophisticated aircraft from the United States enemies. Several companies then submitted design proposals. The USAF ultimately selected two proposals submitted by Northrop and Lockheed. Northrop collaborated with McDonnell Douglas to develop the YF-23, while Lockheed collaborated with Boeing and General Dynamics to develop the YF-22. The YF-23 prototype first flew first, namely on August 27, 1990. Meanwhile, the YF-22 followed a month later on September 29, 1990. The YF-22 and YF-23 carried their weapons in very different ways. The YF-22 presented a fairly straightforward affair, with a shallow weapons bay that ran along the bottom of the fuselage, and two small bays flanking the aircraft's waist, like a Wild West gunner's belt, carried a pair of short-range AIM-9 sidewinders. The seeker head on the sidewinder will be placed into the slipstream at an angle after the side chamber door opens and before it locks and fires its mounting rail at the enemy. The AIM-120 will be launched from the ventral chamber using a pneumatic trapeze-like vertical launcher. Each missile has one of its own and can be launched freely regardless of the status of other missiles in the bay. In contrast, Northrop's YF-23 comes with a less straightforward weapons bay configuration. In addition to the shallow, mostly conformal bays, the YF-23 had one large, coffin-like gun-carrying bay that extended from the rear of the cockpit, back to the area between the aircraft's uniquely widely spaced air intakes. The bay is covered by two very large outer swing doors and the interior of the bay is much deeper than that found on the YF-22 but is also slightly narrower overall. The Technology Pilot aircraft was designed to carry three AIM-120s and two AIM-9s in this bay, three AIM-120s mounted staggered on trapeze launchers and two AIM-9s mounted on the bay doors. This was said to be because a usable launch system was never installed on one of the prototype airframes. Although some reports state that one AIM-120 instrument was installed in the aircraft bay for compliance checks and possibly to measure vibrations during flight tests. Lockheed's YF-22, on the other hand, actually test-fired the AIM-120 during the demonstration phase, which wasn't even part of the ATF requirements, but was impressive nonetheless. This also further illustrates that the YF-22 is a much more mature design than Northrop's offering. Large, deep gun bays are great for air-to-ground applications, but they invite complexity that may be undesirable for air-to-air -air applications. Stacking missiles on top of each other means that if one missile jams, the missile behind it will be unusable, or worse. This also means that complex missile handling and launch mechanisms are required. This can add weight and complexity to the design, thereby increasing the risks and possible costs associated with it. At the same time, the large, deep, 
Trough-shaped weapons compartment meant that the YF-23 could potentially carry large amounts of air-to-ground payload, including 2,000-pound class weapons, and perhaps even larger. Such bays can also be subdivided for the different types of small arms that can be carried at one time. Like many YF-23 aircraft, if you think about it, this is an ATF that can carry a wide variety of air-to-ground weapons, including munitions capable of destroying large targets and having good defenses. And especially fighters that have better kinematics, range, and power. Low, stealth, performance compared to the YF-22, would be an almost ideal fighter today. In fact, a design very similar to the YF-23 continues to be considered to represent the next leap in manned fighter capabilities nearly three decades after the YF-23 first took to the skies.